Hey guys, what's up? I've completed the building of the battery, and uh, this is what this is it with the top off, and uh, we'll just go over some few basics of what I've done. So anyway, uh, you can see the copper shims. They're basically printed circuit boards without any printing. It's just basically it was a giant copper circuit board about this big that I just cut up in little pieces, and there's cardboard in between each of one, each of them. So is the top where these two cells join right here and they're are the main what I call the main outs so this is cell 1, 2, 3 is on the bottom and 4 is on the bottom over there so it's going in a series it just loops this way so to connect them I just used the copper shim in between and then I just soldered these two pieces together and I connected another shim the reason I did that is so I would have somewhere to solder without having to solder directly to each one of the battery tabs so I could actually have, you know, a solder joint without it coming unsoldered if I ever needed to work on it. Um, there's a switch as well as a coaxial connector. It's not hooked up right now, but what's going to happen is when I plug it in, it will fire up the device, or you can turn it on via the switch. The reason I did that is because I want to make it so you can use the device without having to have that special connector. So you can use the device for all sorts of different things. Um, the high charge on the battery is going to be 16.6, and the dead charge is 12 volts, so you have 4.6 volts of variance there. Low charge on these cells is 3 volts per cell. 3.7 is nominal, and 4.2 is charged. The connector that charges it is a 5-pin, it even says jack, haha. Um, it's a 5-pin, um, I forget the thing called a Fillmore connector, I'm not sure, but pin number one comes in, pin number two comes off here, you can see the green wire, and pin number three, which is the negative. Pin number two is also the positive for this battery, and pin number three is the negative for this battery. Conversely, on the fourth, on the third cell, pin number three is a positive, and pin number four is a negative. Then on the fourth cell, pin number four is a positive, pin number five is a negative. That's just how it works with LiPos. But then, of course, pin 1 and pin 5 come out when you get the series voltage of 16.6 .6 volts. Um, I had an LED right there. I know it's bad light. But I accidentally overvolted it and blew it up instantly. So, it's gone. Bye-bye. I'll get another one and fix that. Um, yada yada. Each one of these coaxial connectors, is all they all lock. This one is threaded on the outside, so it goes in, you thread it. And these two are a little different. You twist it, put it in, and twist it about, it's like 20 to 30 degrees, and they lock that way. Weird thing is, each one of these also has three connectors, one, two, and three. I bent the others down. Um, they're really strange because the outside of the coaxial connector, what I call the barrel, is negative. And when the barrel is out, when it's not plugged in, both of those connectors, uh, connect, you know, there, there's continuity, but when you plug it in, this one on the outside is no longer connected. I have no idea why anyone would want to do that unless you're running some sort of relay, so when you plug it in, you know, you choose to either have a hot switch or I don't, I don't know, but it's very strange. I don't know why they would do that, but I tried to make my wiring as clean as possible, make everything work well. Um, I had to pull off one of the studs on accident. There's four studs. It originally came with six, so it'd be one, two, three, four, five, and six, but this stud is gone. It's held in right now with double sided, you know, top stick, and it's not moving at all. When the top goes on, focus. When the top goes on, uh, there's about two millimeters of play in between the batteries and the top. Now, it doesn't matter because they're held down pretty, pretty damn well, so they're not going anywhere. Labeled label them and I'm going to count how many times I use them so I can see what sort of usage I'm actually getting. This is a six conductor wire. Pretty cheap, 35 cents a foot. I'm going to go with something a little different because the wires move around pretty easily inside and the issue there is when you're trying to strip it out you'll have one wire just pull out while the other wires stay in and that's really annoying. So anyway, I'm going to fix that later when I get a different wire. But um, right now the whole system stays hot I have, oh, no, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. The switch is actually in place. Uh, the switch is a single pull double throw, but I kind of reverse used it. The center pin 
is always constant, it's always hot to the switch. So the variable is going to be which direction the switch is pushing. So if it's pushing one direction, it'll draw off a battery. This right here is going to be a voltage input. When you switch the switch the other way, it'll activate that input, cutting off the battery. So if you are in a bind, you can input 12 volts, 14 volts, whatever it is that you need. And it will bypass the battery, but it will leave these hot. So if you have a recorder and you know receivers all going to it, you don't have to have you know a butt connector to join to male. Well, I don't, actually, they're probably called female um, coaxial connectors. So you can do that, and then eventually I want to have... Um, PCBs on each one of the batteries so I can just input power and those will allow the batteries to charge. There's ways of doing it, I just haven't done enough research on it just yet and this prototype was pretty inexpensive to build as far as the battery goes. It's about $200 once it's all said and done um, to build but that's with equipment, wire and that's, act that's actually probably on the high side but each battery is 30 bucks a piece, which is a really, really good price. Uh, these are really good cells. I checked the resistance each one. They all come out to be about 1.43, 1.44, 1.45 million ohms, which is very, very consistent. I've had some that were, you know, 650 million ohms to 200, and the, all over the map. But anyway, these cells are pretty, I'm pretty happy with. Now this little device here, this is the charger. This is nothing like what I was talking about earlier in the thread, saying that I would, you wouldn't want you to get concerned about, I get confused about how to use a LiPo charger. And if you've never used a LiPo charger balancer before, it can be a little overwhelming because there's a lot of options. And, you know, sometimes if you hit a button, you'll switch your options, then you go back to use it the next time, not paying much attention, and next thing you know, you're charging it instead of balancing it. And if you have cells that get pretty far out of balance, then you come up with the issue of not having a fully charged battery. So I discovered this today completely by accident and it's funny because it's cheaper than a regular charger but it's easier, it's faster, and it's stupid proof. Literally, one button. You can't fuck it up. The system is stopped. You choose LiPo or Nickel Metal Hydride. LiPo, hold it down. That's it. You can't screw it up. So I think maybe if you are interested in the system, I can pair it with this. This is not the final wiring. This is just a test because I didn't want to cut this thing open yet just to make sure everything works properly. Um, but the way LiPos work is you have each one of your taps coming in one, two, three, four, five. So that's the first two, like I said before. Focus. The first two are the first battery. The next two are the second battery and so on. So we split off the positive and negative, which is the outside, to go directly into here because when it charges quickly, it just basically sends out a lot of voltage to get the cells up to voltage and then it balances out each one individually through what's called the balance tap. You can see it shows you how many different cells. So we're using four cells, not six cells. Six is right below. That's six, that's five, four, three, two. So we balance the cells. Cells come out fantastically and all is happy, all is good and that's it. So like I said, this thing is incredibly small. It's very thin. I'm very happy about that. Um, I think it's, like I said, three quarters of the thickness of an MP1. And the goal is to have that slide between me and the recorder. So that leaves a whole other pocket available. And I don't have to worry about taking up a pouch for a battery, which I see a lot of guys do. I'm very, very anal when it comes to keeping my bag organized and just very easy to see, clean, and all that. It's, it's physically dirty because I've used it for two years, but um, it's... Everything is very organized. I have four electros and I can't afford to lose another pouch to an MP1. And considering I use a petrol PS607, they kind of flop around literally like this. <laughs> the radios sit right here and when you move around they flop side to side. So right now I have Velcro going between the left side and the right side that keeps them stationary. So if I move around I don't feel like... I don't feel like I have floppy titties. So anyway, that will help keep this clean. I'll have an extra pouch, maybe throw, I don't know, throw four more in there. It would weigh a lot, but, you know, whatever. Not having to charge a battery for a week would be amazingly awesome. Uh, some of the other ideas I was thinking of doing is being able to cascade these batteries so I could have a multitude of batteries stacked up and then just go out using my inputs and outputs 
kind of like uh, the way the Tachyon batteries work, but just not $200 for a 2.5 amp hour battery, which is a, it's rape, that's rape all the way. So anyway, um, that's it, that's, that's the build. The top isn't on, obviously, because I'm monitoring it, making sure the cells don't puff up. And they're not puffing, they're pretty tight. And I'll explain what that means later. This is a 10 minute video and you're probably getting bored if you haven't stopped watching. So anyway guys, this is it. Thanks for checking it out. If you're interested at all past this point, let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. Later.